Last time that we were talking about stuff, we were talking about how the RLC has dried up quite a bit due to use of the waters feeding into the RLC for irrigation, for bringing water to farmlands. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of pictures in the area. Um, so this is some roads that are connecting Tibet and China. So not quite in our Central Asia, the Stan Nation areas, but it does give you an example of how mountainous the area is and all the roads that are in kind of the area and how they can kind of look. This is a person who's harvesting wheat in Kazakhstan. So you can see the combine there harvesting the wheat. Uh, this is Mongolian steep. So steps, Mongolian step. You can see how it's pretty flat. Uh, horses are kind of from this area. And this just kind of shows you the physical regions of the area. Let me make this map bigger for you so you can see. Oh, or not, because that's not how it records. <laughs> oh, never mind. Um, but you can see, kind of see here on the map, the most of the mountainous regions are kind of over here in the Central Asia area. So the stand is over there on the side. Uh, climates of Central Asia. So you can kind of see here the climates a bit. So this is kind of the various climate zones that are in the area. Uh, this is kind of Central Asia winter. So you can kind of see how it gets a, quite a bit of snow in the area. And a lot of our pine trees are more the trees that we have. So they're more the pine trees, more the conifers. And there are some areas in which people do kind of settle just around like uh, oases and such. So people do kind of settle around those areas. Uh, this is a person milking a yak. So I can kind of see the yak there and kind of see the person milking them. This shows you a nomadic dwelling in Kyrgyzstan. So nomadic dwelling in Kyrgyzstan. And you kind of see the kids out there playing. And this right here is called a ger, G-E-R. So this is called a ger. Uh, gers you can take down and put up pretty easily. Uh, it kind of sets up like a teepee in a way, except you have, instead of your crossbars, just going in like an X to the top. Uh, instead, you kind of make a base first, and then you bring your bars up to the center. Why is there a little hole right here? That's so that when you have a fire going, so that way when you have a fire going, the fire can then go out, the smoke can then go out the hole. Uh, so that's why there's a little hole right there in the tent. And you can also see that instead of being straight up and down, it's at an angle. That way, when it rains, it doesn't get inside of the gur. Right, so once again, this is called a gur. It's a nomadic dwelling in the area. This shows uh, population density of the area. You can see how these area, the Stan Nations right over here, these are Stan Nations right here. You can see how they're very lightly populated. There's not a lot of people there, but then you do have some thick pockets of population here, over here, and kind of in the Kazakhstan area, there's a bit more population and such. Go ahead and make a bullet. And for the first bullet we're making, we're gonna write down the word lowland. So bullet, lowland. So bullet, lowland. So bullet, lowland. After you have bullet, lowland, go ahead and make a one. And we're gonna write down loss. And that's silty soil deposited by the wind that provides fertile agricultural soil. So one lost silty soil deposited by the wind that provides fertile agricultural soil. So for loss, as you can see here, you kind of see where loss kind of comes from. So it comes from hillsides. And what happens is that wind kind of gets going. It kind of goes through the area. It will pick up the light particles in the hills or mountains, and then it will drop it down onto the flat areas. And then that becomes good areas for farming. You can see that here in this map right here. You can see the mountains right here and the hills. And then the red areas, Those are, that's where people actually live and can farm. So because of that loss, that kind of light soil that's good for farming, because of that, it then gets down to this area here, and then people can live and farm in this area. Not in the desert, though. No, no rain there. So you may have to depend on farming. You may have to depend on loss for farming. Or 
you may have to depend on Oasis. So this is an Oasis that's Astana. So Astana has a Oasis that people kind of use as well. Uh, here's another picture of Astana. So there's like another picture of it. For your languages in the area, um, you can see kind of the languages match up to the areas. So in Kazakhstan, which is right here, they speak Kazakh. In Turkmenistan, they speak Turkmen. In Uzbekistan, most of the people live down here. So the people that live right here speak Uzbek. But then the area, as you can see, has a little bit different throat. Uh, Tajikistan, maybe speak Tajik. You know, Kazakhstan, maybe Kyrgyz. All right. So that's just kind of how it kind of works. So you're, the language they speak is the main ethnic group also that lives in the area. Not true for all of them, but true for a lot. Go ahead and make a new bullet, Islam in Central Asia. So new bullet, Islam in Central Asia. So bullet, Islam in Central Asia. And then after you have bullet Islam in Central Asia, go ahead and make a one and write down most of the regions Muslims are Sunni. So one, most of the regions Muslims are Sunni. So most of the regions Muslims are Sunnis. So we talked about before about how there's two major groups. There's the Shias and there's the Sunnis. And most of the Muslims in this particular area, though, are of the Sunni branch of the Muslim religion. Uh, two. Uh, communists discourage all religions. So two communists discourage all religions. So remember, these stand nations all used to be part of the Soviet Union. Soviet Union was a communist nation. Uh, the communists tend to discourage all religions. Um, they don't like the fact that in religion, um, some people think their destinies are guided by religion, and the communists don't like that. So two communists discourage all religions. However, even though the communists discourage all religions, there has been quite a bit of a Islamic revival of architecture in the area after the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. So you can kind of see there's a lot of new things that have been constructed in the area for the religion of Islam. And this right here, the Buddhist temple in Tibet, not quite, again, not quite part of our stand nations, but pretty cool little temple right there. Uh, this is some other pictures of some other cultural elements in the area. This kind of showing you falconry. Uh, falconry is when you you know train a falcon and such. So falconry, you have horse racing, wrestling. Uh, also kind of their statues as well. So you see this kind of statue here. So you have statues from the Soviet Union period. So this was made during the Soviet Union time period. Uh, there's some other things also in the area. So in Kazakhstan, uh, this you, this is kind of the home of the Russian space program. It's in Kazakhstan. Russia doesn't own Kazakhstan, you know, but the Soviet Union had their main stuff in Kazakhstan. So therefore, Kazakhstan still continues to be the main place where the Russian pro program operates at. Uh, this right here, this rocket is a Suez rocket, which is used pretty heavily by them. All right, let's go ahead and stop there for today.